look at data across, kind of across the world, that was talking about women and educational leadership. And granted, the United States has not done a lot of research on it. And because we don't want to talk about it here, but in all these other countries, they showed how women in educational leadership got so much better results mm-hmm. than males. And not to say they weren't doing a good job. Right. And, but it were so many different countries of different sizes and statues that were saying, yeah, our women educational leaders are rocking. Yes. So it, it was really baffling to me how you couldn't find the stats or the research for the United States. I'm like, we're not wanting to talk about that this is an issue, that we have to get more exactly. educated. We have to, and even those who don't go to the traditional colleges, the trades, I mean, you can't just go into it and say, okay, I'm going to do this. This is my hobby. Get those certifications. Yeah. You have to get those um, and, and do that continuing education yeah. because someone's always second guessing our skill. Yeah. Someone's yeah. always second guessing our qualifications. So if nothing else, we have got to have that resume. Yeah, we have yeah. got to have that education. And, and, and granted, it is a benefit to us yeah. because n- no one should ever want to get in their craft and say, all right, I'm here and I- I'm good. Yeah. You should always want to keep learning and growing. So that importance of education is, is huge for us. While we're trying to Women of color are always trying to keep up with our male counterparts of color. They're trying to keep up with their their counterparts uh, <laughs> that are, are, are Caucasian males. So we're <laughs> doing double the work. So yes. we, we've got to be educated. We're we've always doing double the work. <laughs> yes. yes, we are. And then we're expected to go home and do the same. So and yeah. right, and then we got to take care of the house. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I, so one thing that we kind of, we didn't talk about, and, and I, I guess I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but I know that when, you know, education becomes a part of the conversation, sometimes people are like, well, I don't have the money to go to school. And I don't have the money to do this. And, and like, we already know that here in the U.S., the way that they have, you know, rock student loans and, you know, all this stuff, it, it, it creates extra barriers to education. Um, so I, I'm, I was reminded while you were talking about, you know, when you're talking about, okay, well, you know, if, if going to like a four year university or something like that to get a degree is not necessarily, you know, what's really interesting to me is that we, we normalize four year degrees in our country, but yet the jobs that are available to us don't always necessarily require four year degrees. I mean, like they require them as like, you must have a bachelor, you must have a master's degree. But like when you think about the job that you're actually going to be doing, in my head, I would prefer to hire somebody that has more specialized skills or training specifically to the job I'm going to hire them for. So unless you're a dentist drilling in my mouth or something like that, like, you know, I'm a confidence coach and my degrees, they definitely helped me, but I did not need to go to a four-year university to get the education that I got, right? Yeah. I was reminded of one of my dear friends, Sierra Melcher. She wrote an article in Elephant Journal a couple of years ago. I was trying to find it while you were talking, but long story short, the um, topic of it was basically how to create a financial budget that allowed you to continue your education in the field that you wanted to learn in. No, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's just a matter of creating the budget so that you can say, okay, um, we'll say confidence coaching, you know, I want, uh, someone's like, I want to be a confidence coach. Okay. Well, what types of certifications or trainings do you think someone would need to have to be a confidence coach? Because people always say to me like, oh, you must have a psychology degree. And then like, I don't have it. I have a health communication degree, which is very different from psychology. Uh, My mom's a therapist. So I was around like a lot of psychological stuff growing up, but like, that's all my degree is in. And so, and then they were like, oh, well, don't you need a, a psycho, psycho psychology degree to do what you do. No, I'm not a therapist. 
right? right? I'm a confidence coach, which means I'm teaching you specifically about confidence. So when I think about where I want, like now, I'm a bit, I'm a big, 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 like continuing education. I'm such a nerd. Yes, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like always learning. I'm like, where are the new books? And oh, there's just a new re- the research study. Oh, okay, let's go ahead and read it. Like I'm, <laughs> I have my yeah. Google alerts on for confidence research for women. And it's just like, whenever something pops up, I'm like, woo. And my friends are like, are you reading research right now? I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, Anyway, so like creating the, what Sierra's point is that creating the budget around what you want to spend your money on for continuing education. Like I'm going to a confidence, um, I'm getting a, conf- a certification specifically for coaches who teach confidence and self-esteem. And that's just like something that I found on my own from the, uh, the Confidence Institute. I follow their newsletter and finally they were like, we're doing these different types of trainings. Which one would you like to do? And I was like, that one and that one. You know, but it's one of those things where I think, okay, do I want to go back and like get my PhD in this? And like, maybe someday I will. Right. But right now, what I really want to be do, what I really want to be doing is working with people and learning from people and engaging with people. And the idea of like going back for more years behind like a PhD type of degree, I'm like, right. no thanks. I would rather like take these smaller certifications maybe get certified in like certain different kinds of things, go to trainings and workshops and what do they call them? The big, like, um, I was going to call it a concert, but that's not what it is. Convent, like a convention type yes, of thing. Yes. Where it's like, they're talking about the things that I actually teach right now and how it is that I want to engage people. And that you can save that money or you can take out smaller loans yeah. so that you can get that education and like pay yourself back without having to have the huge debt of a student loan for a degree behind you. Right. I, I will definitely say that that is something that truly does plague the community is the, the cost associated behind it. And, and like you said, there are things that you can do mm-hmm. in the interim, or if that's something that, you know, you desire to have the degree, but there are lots of things you can do in the interim, a lot of micro credentials and um, a lot of, this continuing education that you can do in just to just get those specific skills because it is about the skill and, and you're right. It does not, you can have a hundred degrees and still not have the skill necessary yeah. to do a, a, a particular job. So yeah. I, it's almost I, like I tell people with their, like, you know, like your affirmations or like when people are like constantly ingesting mindset, like, how do I have a better mind? How do I manifest? How do I do all this stuff? And they're just constantly like self help in, 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 in. I'm like, yo, baby girl, at some point that stuff has to come out as practice. Like, yes. it has to. You can, you can, and, and not only that, you can't even absorb it properly unless you're actually putting some of it into practice and realizing what works and doesn't work for you. And yes. you can listen to it day, day in and day out, but like at some point you have to put into action what you're learning. Yes. And you get the most benefit out of it that way, because then you can go, you know what? I listened to that person's like mindset advice. And then when I did it, I felt like shit. So I'm not going to do that anymore. Right. You can like move on to the next thing. But if you just keep ingesting them and you're just ingesting them and you're not doing it, then you're like, oh, like I'm ingesting stuff that's never going to work for me. Right. Um,